Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my tiling trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare different surfaces, set out and install large format tiles and outdoor slabs using three different methods. One will be directly onto a concrete base. The second one will be on top of mechanically tampered hardcore. And the third one will have no cement or mortar, nor grout. The rear of this Victorian house already has a layer of reclaimed bricks covering the area. This was firmly compact down, standing around 120 mm deep, which will act as part of our hardcore base. Next, we installed drain channels on a lean 4 to 1 mortar mix to the lower side of the patio. This will catch and control the rainwater. These need to be connected to your main surface drains or a soak away that's at least 5 meters away from the building. We then added 50 mm of MOT roadstone on top of the existing brick base, building up a depth of around 175 mm. On one side we set the hardcore a little higher to create a fine slope which will control the rainwater. The finished slabs want to fall around 20 mm across 1.5 m in length. The MOT roadstone was compact down using a mechanical whacker plate. This helps bind the crushed stone and firm up the surface. One final check that the drains were level before we started to mix and spread the concrete screed to cover one half of the area for the first method of wet installation. So I'm mixing up a very lean concrete screed. I'm going to lay this around about 40 to 60 millimetres deep. It's a mixture of ballast, which is a combination of gravel and sharp sand mixed with cement, tampered heavily with a straight edge. Once it's dried for about an hour, I can then start to buff up the surface using a plastic float. This is going to get left for a minimum of three weeks to dry, then I'm ready to start tiling. So as you can see, both sides of my sub base is now complete with the preparation side of things. I'm now ready for the two different methods of installation. So these are the outdoor slabs that I'm going to be using. They're from the hard blue grey range. They're 600 millimetres square, 20 millimetres thick, and they come in two different patterns. One with a pattern on like this, which I'm going to be using in the center, and then also a plainer one, which I'll use for my border right the way around the outside edge. So the next stage is to set the area out. The general rule of thumb when you're tiling a floor will be to find your very center point for a measure on either side of the wall, put a string line down, and then you can work out how many tiles work off the string line either side, and that'll give you a balanced cut one side on the other that looks symmetric and nice on the eye. However, if you start on the very centre like I've done here with a full tile and you work your way out and find you've got a little small slither which aesthetically is not going to look very nice, then you can start with your first tile staggering your centre line, so 50% each side of that centre line and that'll give you a larger cut, still an equal cut on either side. So. My area here is not quite a rectangle. We've got a bit of a dog leg in here where our drains come around and the building steps out a fraction. So I'm going to have different size cuts either way I do it on here. So I'm going to go a little bit offset from the centre and just kind of stagger it a little bit. So when I come further down in the patio area, I'm going to have a larger cut here, which will balance this area out. Now I'm ready to mix my adhesive. Don't forget your PPE. I'm using a Caraqui Rapid Set Flexible Cement Based Powder Adhesive, which is mixed with cold clean water. It's suitable for ceramic, porcelain, glass tiles, mosaics, and natural stone tiles and slabs. So with these being 600 millimeter square tiles, I'm just laying enough adhesive down to cover two of them, 1200 mil in length and about 600 mil in wide. So I spread that across with a normal trowel and then I take my notch trowel and I start to scrape that across there and spread that adhesive out more evenly. You'll find you'll lift some more of this off as you comb the notch trowel through. Okay, so now I'm going to place the first tile down. Remember they are 20 millimetres thick, so they are quite heavy. Now, sometimes some fitters prefer to butter the back, and some manufacturers say 
it should have the back buttered with tile adhesive and some manufacturers don't. So on this particular one, I'm just putting a very, very thin layer, a smooth thin layer across this tile, just as a bit of belt and brace. Really. And I'm gonna lift this and lay it just more or less up to that string line there. Now if you happen to have drains in there, of course you're gonna to have to check your levels that it is gonna run into the actual drain itself. And if you're happy with this, go straight onto the second tile and then continue one full row, nice and tight on your string line, checking that it's level at all times. Then you can start your second course, spreading the adhesive and combing it through. Now, as you can see, I'm using a leveling system. If you haven't used one of these before, certainly on large tiles, they're worth their weight in gold. Real simple how they work. These are the leveling clips. They go on the underside of the two tiles, and then you have a leveling wedge which slides underneath. So this tile is fixed into position. I've combed my adhesive there. I'm gonna place them. I'm actually using three of them just generally because the size and the weight of these outdoor slabs. One in the corner, one in the center, and one in the opposite corner there. And now I'll place it down very gently on top of the clips. A gentle little Tap down either with your hand or a rubber mallet. You have one. And then I take my wedges, wedge them through that gap there. Get them in as tight as you can, just with your hands. And then you have the leveling tool, which hooks on the back end. And as you put the pressure and squeeze that in, I can feel that tile just start to rise a little bit and it's bringing it flush with this one on here. And that should be nice and level now. The hard blue range is available in four color variants, gray, dark gray, graphite, and white. There's also three accompanied deco style tiles available which can be mixed. So as you can see on all of these tiles, I've been applying a small thin amount of tile adhesive along the back thing. It's only a couple of millimetres thick, nice and smooth, and of course combing the base out where they're going to be fixed. Now most manufacturers recommend if they're 600 millimetres square or larger to do this, but do check with Tile Mountain on whatever size tiles you buy, because it can also differ a little bit depending on what adhesive you're using and what base you're actually going down on as well. So I've got my adhesive there combed out using my 12 millimeter uh, notch trowel. And now I'm just gonna place that down into position there. Now besides the cuts, that's one half of my patio slabs installed. As you can see, there's only the cuts around the both sides and the back edge that needs doing. Now I'm gonna to start to fix the actual slabs down on this side, which is my compact hardcore but i'm not using the traditional method like i did behind me which was a flexible rapid set combed out to 12 millimeters this time i'm going to use the rock type mortar and my bed is probably going to be about 40 millimeters to 60 millimeters still keeping my gradual fall down into my drain so now i have to mix the primer to apply to the back of the tile on the bucket it has a markings on here of how much water to how much cement ratio here's the packets there five kilos each cut them open and place this into the water i'm going to start by stirring this with my gauge and trowel just for a couple of moments and then i'll get my electric paddle mixer to mix it to a nice liquid consistency So now the primer is mixed, ready to apply to the back of the tiles. I'm going to mix the Rock-Tite mortar. I've got 3.75 litres of cold, clean water in there. That's all you need for a 25 kilo bag. So I'm going to mix that up with my mixer. The Rock-Tite mortar can also be mixed by hand if you don't have a mechanical mixer. 
Now, this is the kind of consistency I'm looking for on the rock tank mortar once it's mixed because we are going to have a thicker bed and it's quite easy and feels a bit lightweight than the traditional sand and cement mortar to work with. We just want to spread it all out here. I can still use my tire leveling system in there. place the tile down on top which has already had the primer on the back of it. Of course always checking that I've got my fall into my drains there which is very important, a little bit harder to do. Have it sloping down and then level across this side. Then I use my point and trowel to compact the mortar from the under edge of the slab. Now our hardcore sub base is about 150 millimeters in depth, and this is heavily compacted down with a wacker plate. If you're laying porcelain slabs like these, we'd recommend about 50 millimeters depth of rock type mortar. However, if your base was more solid like a concrete slab, you can range your mortar bed from 10 millimeters right the way up to 80. The hard blue range is constructed from durable 20mm porcelain which will look great for years, guaranteed to stand up to the elements with an anti-slip rating of R11. So now this area has had 24 hours to completely dry. I can walk on the tiles no problem and I can start to remove all of my wedges and actually snap off the actual clips. Sometimes they can be a little bit tricky, sometimes they come out a bit easier than others. And once you've got them all out, you're ready to start doing the cuts around all four edges. As for my cuts on the both sides, I prefer to cut a stockpile first and line them all up exactly where they're going to be installed. So I start off by taking my measurements from the actual wall edge or the drain edge to the existing tile that's already fixed and dried into position. Then deduct that by 10 millimeters. Mark that on your tile and then you can start cutting them. There's a number of different ways of cutting them. I'm using a wet electric tile cutter with a diamond tip blade that applies water to the blade whilst it's being cut to keep it cool. Alternatively, you can use a circular saw or a nine inch grinder. Once you've cut a stockpile, you're ready to start installing them. On the side with the concrete base in place, I'm starting at one end of the patio where the slabs have been installed using the rapid set adhesive, combing it out at 12 millimeters in depth. You can lay them just the same as you're laying the main slabs using your leveling system by putting your clips in place and then squeezing the plastic wedges into position. Now where we've got a dog leg in our drains, we've had to do an unusual cut. I cut one section of the slab with the electric tile cutter and the other section I used a nine inch grinder. Now the second half of the patio, I installed the main slabs down using the rocket tight mortar. So again, once I've done my cuts, I'll stockpile them, then mix up my rock tight mortar, lay this down. Then of course you'd install this just the way you did with the main slabs. So that's my last cut slab now getting fixed into position to complete one side of the patio. Then I did the same on the top and the opposite side of the patio until I completely installed all the pre-cut tiles. So this is my final tile, now cut. Perfect. So that's my last cut tile now set into place. I'm gonna leave this to dry. I'm gonna clean up all of the excess adhesive that may be still left on the cuts that I fitted this morning. Once that's dried off, I'm gonna apply a pre-grout treatment. Now this is really easy to do. It can be applied by using a paintbrush, a roller, or a light pressured sprayer. I'm gonna put a coat on all over the tiles, leave this for about 30 minutes to penetrate in, then apply a second coat, and an hour later, I'm ready to start grouting. Now, as you know, I've installed the slabs here using two different techniques. The one side over here was onto the concrete slab, and I used standard tile adhesive for that one and then the opposite end was on the hardcore using the rock tight mortar so I'm going to show you two different types of grouting 
One is the standard external grout, which is going to be on this side that we laid on the concrete slab. And the other is the rock tight brushing grout, which of course is going to be on the opposite side where we use the rock tight mortar. Pour the powder into a container of cold clean water and briskly mix by hand using a flat scraper until you get a lump free sludge consistency just like this. It's easy to apply your wet grout using a rubber edge grouting float, pressing the grout firmly into the joints so there is no cavities left unfilled. Ultra Colour Plus Grout is high performing and quick setting. Joint widths can range from 2mm to 20mm wide. It's also available in all manners of colours. Suitable for interior and exterior use, it can be applied in both wet and dry conditions as well as being mould resistant. Once you've covered a small area, then you can use the grouting trowel to try to remove the excess grout from the surface of the slab, then wiping the areas down with a clean, damp sponge. The one half of the patio has now been grouted. I've applied it in, I've got a wet sponge and I've buffed it over the top of it. I'm gonna leave this to dry for another 30 minutes or so and then keep buffing it off until I get the top of them slabs completely clean. Now moving on to the other half with the Rock Tight Brushing Grout, which is a cement-free brushing jointing compound designed for filling joints from three millimeters wide between concrete, natural stone and porcelain slabs. It's easy to use and is applied straight out of the bucket with a soft brush. When using a porcelain product, make sure you wet the top of the surface first before you start to grout. To create a slurry. Once all the gaps are filled, you can apply some clean cold water over the slabs and wipe in with a flat wet sponge mop, smoothing the top surfaces of the joints. Now for the third and final method of installing your outdoor slabs, I'm here in the Mr. and Mrs. DIY headquarters and I'm going to be doing a suspended system. And that means laying all the slabs, all your large format tiles on these adjustable support pedestals. Meaning there's no mechanical fixing involved, just the sheer weight of the slab holds it into position. So there is no adhesive, nor is there any grout. The support pedestal consists of four separate pieces. This is the head. This is the base. And then the stem has the nut that threads up and down like this. So I'm going to put them to the side for one minute. To start with, for the very first slab, I'm going to place four of the base sections here. I'm going to take my spirit level and I'm going to start at one point and make sure all three of them are actually level. Now again, of course, the floor doesn't have to be level here. If we get a starting point, we can rise that up and down. Checking that we've got that level there. Do the same on the opposite one there. And then the same on this one. I'm going to take out the four top pieces. These are going to be placed on the top here. Now, if we look closely to these, we've got four little spaces. And what that will do is keep your tiles square and in line with one another. And it will also allow a 2.2 millimeter gap between them. So the four of them are now placed into position. I'll square them up to here. Now I'll take a first full slab, place this on the corners. Now the first one's always the hardest because once you've got a couple in position, they all hold each other quite sturdy and in line. So that, that feels quite stable on there now. I'm just going to double check with my spirit level. I should be perfectly level there, yep. And also that way. I'm now going to take that back off because I want to place a centre pedal still right in the middle. Place another stem in here. Now the headpiece for the centre is actually a flat one, which will also get placed into there because it doesn't need the little corner nodules that are standing up proud to stop the tile moving. It just needs to take 
the way to the centre there. So the next stage is to put your spirit level back across here, which may have took it up a millimetre or half a millimetre. So again, hold that bottom little riser and turn that. That's it. So it's just perfect on there. Check it's the same on the other side. Perfect. What we don't want to do is have anything kind of seesawing like this in any way. So if you're happy, you can now sit your first slab right back on top of there. One double check. Yep, perfect. Still perfect. Now that should be nice and steady and hold my weight. Some benefits of using adjustable support pedestals allows rainwater to run between and underneath the slabs. This ensures that there's no standing water left on the surfaces, improving health and safety by making surfaces less slippery. In addition, it also allows pipes, cable ducts and drainage channels all to be tucked away underneath the slabs. Ideal for roof terraces, patios and verandas, adjustable support pedestals allows the slab tiles to be fitted right up to the threshold level on the roof decks and terraces without any risk of flooding. Structural movement is never an issue, as the slabs and tiles are not fixed down with adhesive or grout, so no cracks will appear. Now the pedestal headpiece is designed with four positioning lugs, which are these here, and they're set out in a cross format. And the way that works is, once it's in the stem on the base plate, it starts to form these perfect straight lines here. There's 2.2 millimeters gap in between there, and that sets it out nice and square and keeps it running in a straight line, no matter how big the actual area is that you're covering. You can also adjust the pedestal height if needed just a fraction by hand. Once you put your spirit level on and the tiles or slabs are in position, you can simply move that thread around the stem, either up or down, to tweak it a little bit if needed. So they're the basic tips on installing all your whole tiles or slabs around the area. But of course, you may have cuts along both ends. And it's very typical, like doing any tiling on a floor. You start in the centre, so you've got equal cuts either side, etc. However, if we're here now and we need to put half a cut in here, and our base plates have got our little nodules in here for in the very centre, what we do need to do is cut down these. There are some marks on the back of them here telling you where you can actually cut them down. So that'll be cut down, placed into position round about here if we've got about a 300 millimeter cut. Then the stem will be put into position. The top plate will also be put in position. Now your two half tiles cut here are going to want to sit on here and on here. So you will have to remove two of these little upstands from here and here to allow that half cut tile to sail through and still leaving you a little small gap on the back end of it just the way you would have in the joints between here at 2.2 millimeters and that's exactly how you set out install and grout your outdoor slabs using standard tile adhesive for external use and grout if you're looking for more inspiration, follow us on all social media handles and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to know more information about the products I've been using, just check us out on the website, talmountain.co.uk.